Okay, welcome to analysis of qualitative data. At this point, you have conducted the observation uh, that is relevant to your research study. You've also conducted an interview, and you have transcribed that interview uh, word for word, uh, and you have all that data collected. Now you're coming to the analysis part. Now this is actually not as tricky as it seems when you understand how the basic process works. So what we're going to do in this presentation is go through uh, with some examples of the kinds of data that would apply to this, how to organize them so that it can go into the writing of your case study. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so uh, start out with a, a, a couple thoughts, food for thought if you will. Okay. Your problem being that your first time qualitative researchers is what you do with the data that you get because you're going to find that as you have gone and interviewed, if you have utilized something like a survey, uh, if you've done a focus group, if you know, you'll, you'll have mountains of data. So what is it that you do with this? The first thing you've got to do, if you look at the second quote down here, is generate categories and themes. This will help you identify patterns. You don't just take the data that you collect with something like this and uh, just you know kind of plop it into a, a spreadsheet or anything like that. You literally cover it again and again. This helps you to become more familiarized with it. And as you become more familiarized with it, then you can go and generate the kinds of categories that are necessary. We'll talk more about categories in just a moment. Okay. Nearly as many an analysis strategies exist as qualitative researchers. This is the thing about action research, and I tell this to all my students. Whenever you go to write the case study that you are going to be presenting to your classmates, what you do is you are very upfront about what you did to collect this data. I utilized a survey. I utilized a, an interview. I utilized an interview with a focus group, or I just interviewed a single individual. This is how I went through and analyzed it. The thing about qualitative research is, well, it says there are nearly as many analysis strategies as there are researchers. So while you may uh, choose a particular approach to this, not everyone may agree with you, but they will at least know where you're coming from. And that's the goal right there. Okay? So, you've recorded the interviews, you've plowed through tapes and typed reams of transcripts. I'm sure it has taken a while to go and type up the interview transcript. I hope you didn't wait till the 11th hour to do that. Create a nightmare. Okay, how do you go and account for this? How do you go and uh, make sense of all this data in a way that illuminates your research question and helps you to go and answer it? Okay, you're going to conduct an analysis. Now, what happens here is uh, you have you go and you organize the data that you have. Now, this is a process called chunking. Okay? This isn't a word that you've got to know for a quiz or anything like that, but chunking is a way of, of extracting different parts of data from observations or from interviews or from uh, archival um, uh, bits of data and using those to help you tell a story to help you go and build a case study. An example might be quotations that come from an interview. Um, you might go and see something that just exemplifies what your research study is about. Okay, so where do you start? You create a data transcript first. You start out with the interview transcript. You go and organize this in a way that it is, uh, it's electronic, that's the best way to go and have this. Uh, I would go and double space it. Look for this to be the kind of document that you write over all over the place, or you write on all over the place, excuse me. Um, because this, you're literally going to be interacting with this document. This is going to be where you're getting a lot of the data from as far as what spoken word has, okay? Choose a unit of analysis in a written document or transcript. This might be part of an interview. It could be a it could be a statement. It could be a paragraph. In some instances it might be a word. That would be a little unusual to see, but it's certainly possible. Okay? Across all the respondents, count the number of time a particular word or a phrase or a, or an idea comes up. 
Okay? What you're doing is you're collecting this so that you can say that this isn't something that an isolated individual says, but this is going across a number of different uh, respondents in your study. Okay? You establish categories for similar phrases or thoughts. We'll get more to that in just a second. So this is what I'm going to suggest. You're going to have a, a set of 5x7 index cards. You need a set of 5x7 index cards. You will need, uh, I would suggest, a glue stick, and I would suggest several magic markers. What you're going to do is literally take phrases as they are relevant from your transcript and put them onto your data cards. This is the easiest, most visual way to organize your information. Okay? This is an example of how one is formatted. And if you look, I'll, I'll use my cursor to, uh, to show you what I mean. On the top left of the data card, you're going to in indicate what, what the source was. Okay? Was it an interview? Was it an observation? Was it perhaps um, a different uh, school document? Where did you get this information from? Okay? What about the site? Was it at your school? Was it at a different place? You know, this it's important to go and keep track of this information for later on. In the beginning, you're wanting to put in more information than you actually need. You may not need it later on, but it'll be easier than just going back and trying to figure out what it is you were missing. The type of the respondent, a teacher, a superintendent, a student, secretary, a, a parent, a volunteer, whomever was involved in this, put them down here. Okay, uh, and then an episode. If this was the first interview, the second interview, the third, you know, the first observation, third observation, whatever's relevant. Now the themes. The themes here are literally going to emerge as you go through this and as you become more uh, familiarized with it. And we'll talk about that more in just a minute. But this heading you're going to want over every one of your cards. Okay. Uh, and if so, if you can print them out and do a template electronically, fine. If you just go and interview, if you write these out yourself, that's just fine. That's what I always did. Okay. So all right, so let's let's go ahead and get on. So here's an example of an interview. Okay, I was born in February 5th, 1918, in Nuremberg, Germany. This is just a memory from my hometown, Nuremberg, and this is a picture of my parents. This is my mother and this is my father and this child on the floor in the front page was nine years old. Okay, you have, and then you have other things that are being said there. Now, you want to go and extract a chunk of data from this. So what you'll do, look at this. I was born in February 5th, 1918 in Nuremberg, Germany. This doesn't say everything about the person that you're interviewing but it says something about them, so it helps you to go and frame them as an individual and their perspective. Now, this isn't the only one you're going to use. You're going to be extracting lots of this. So you take a statement like this, and, and what I would suggest you do is literally take scissors and cut this quote out of your transcript. That'll help you keep track of what you have already used, and then paste it onto your index card. I was born February in February 5th, 1918 in Nuremberg, Germany. You move on, reading further. Okay, This is the same transcript here. Okay. I remember my brother as a baby. I remember his baby carriage. But what most shocked me was when he was old enough to stand up and I was two, almost two. He was just as tall as I was. Now, when... When you go and take a look at a statement like this, this it'll certainly be similar to other things that are said through the course of this quote. But this is unique in that it, it is you know a, a descriptive kind of a statement. So you extract that. You put this on the next index card. Okay, and if you'll notice up here, you have gone and indicated you know where the source was or what the source of this data was the site where it was conducted, the type of respondent, when it happened. We'll get to the themes here in a minute. Okay. All right, so a third sample. Again, this is from an interview uh, transcript. Now, you'll notice that you'll have uh, this one actually has three different sentences in it. 
And then my brother, and then when brother was, you know, smaller to look after him, I really, when my mother was baking a cake or somebody was baking a cake, I put together, I am the mother, you are the baby, it is time for you to take a nap. Now, you could go and say, well, these are three different statements, three uh, very different statements. If you extracted one from these three, it wouldn't make sense in its own. The three go to build a particular context. So in this instance, having three statements as a part of this makes sense. Now, I do want to say that as you are going and putting these data cards together, don't look to put a half a paragraph on here. Don't do that. You want to minimize if possible, because minimal data still says a lot. Right? If, it's a, if it's a sentence, sometimes it could be the latter half of a sentence and then the first part of another sentence. You don't know what people are going to say. You just want to make sure that you get the most genuinely thick description of them that you can. You place it on these cards. Now, here's another sample. Okay? Here we have a, a longer part of the transcript. Okay? In this, the first two sentences, as a chunk of data, makes sense. You extract them, go and put them on this card. Now, the next step is making comparisons across categories and among questions. So, what you do, and uh, as, as you go through and you put these data cards together, it will depend on what your study is as to how many you have. I would not anticipate you'll have a hundred of them or anything like that. You may have 25 or 30 or 40. It just depends on what's relevant to your study, what kinds of questions you have asked, and who has responded. But you will literally go, I'm just going to scoot back here a minute, if you don't mind. You'll literally go and you'll have this stack of cards and you'll go through them one after another. Okay. As you go through them, you are then going and making, whoops, I'm going to go back one. Then you're going and making a call as to what kind of theme you have. Now, the theme here becomes important because the theme is an identifier for what part of a study a, a particular response may apply to. So, you're, you have this stack of cards. You're going and laying them all out on the table on one, on one uh, card. Let's say it, um, it applies to, um, oh, well, I'll just make up a category of, of uh, family history. Okay, this is a family history quote. You just write family history in the upper right-hand corner. You do another card. That quote doesn't really apply to family history. It applies more to, uh, you know, dreams when a person was growing up. So you might label that category aspirations. So you just write aspirations do another card. And in the upper right hand corner of all these cards, the themes will help you organize it. Now, this is what I'm going to suggest. If you remember earlier on, I said that I would uh, suggest that you have uh, differently colored pens. The deal with this is if you come up with a, an abbreviation, two letters or a symbol or whatever you, you could remember, if you color code the upper right hand portion of your card according to the theme and the particular color that you associate with it, it will actually make it a lot easier to, uh, to go in, and uh, use and to access. Okay? We'll come back uh, to that more in just a minute. Okay? So, you're asking these questions, okay, what kind of similarities are there? Uh, is there one category uh, in terms of interview responses that usually precedes another. You know, uh, do you hear two different kinds of categories or topics that are talked about simultaneously? Okay. The more you go through it, the more, uh, the more sense this will, will make. So you have, you've gone and taken all of your cards and you have these different, um, you, you have these different categories. Now, this is very important. When you do, when you start this, before you ever come up with categories or themes, what you're going to do is group similar kinds of responses. Okay? You're going to go through these data cards. You've gone and put all the data cards together. After you have all of this finished for your data, you're going to group them according to what just kind of goes together. Okay? And as you come up, as you do this, 
you'll go through the whole stack and you'll come up with however many different stacks are required. At the end of that, take a look at the kinds of cards that you have in that stack and you'll decide what theme they apply to and you will label the upper right hand corner of each card according to that theme. You finished with this stack. Now you go on to the second stack. You go through every one. Well what kind of theme is appropriate to what all this data is applied to? You decide what it is. You write it in the upper right hand corner and so forth. You go through as many stacks as you need. Now, here's another part. When you are finished, take all the cards, and it's, and it's like a deck of playing cards. Take all the cards, put them all together, and do it again, and do it again. Now, when you do, when you do this again, you're not going and taking all of the leadership. Let's say we're talking about this. You're not talking about all the cards that have leadership and commitment. You're not grouping those together. You're looking at the responses and you're saying, okay, what seems to go together? What is similar? And, and what you will find is that you're going to group these differently the more times you go through this. You will see that some categories will go away. You'll see that some of these categories uh, may go and collapse with one another. So something like shaping an image and diversity and community may suddenly go together where you didn't think they did in the uh, initially. Okay, So as you do that, this is how you go and organize the data that you have. After you have analyzed it, this is literally the stuff that you go back to uh, extract the information from that will that you'll be writing your case study from. Oh, sorry. Activate the document here. Okay, so, you know, that's basically it for analysis. Now, this will seem, as you go through this, it will seem kind of repetitive uh, from a certain perspective because you're just doing the same thing over and over again. That's okay. It actually goes a lot quicker than you think it does. And when you are finished, you've got this set of data cards that literally has the guts of all the questions that you asked, the survey items, if you used a survey, uh, that you ask your uh, respondents. You'll have what the focus groups uh, will, will um, uh, you know, give up, what, what they will have to say. You know, this is, this is the heart and the core of everything. Now, sometimes people will go and use uh, spreadsheets for this. Sometimes they use qualitative analysis data. Being that this is your first time through this and you're and you are doing this project as a part of this course, I would start out small with something like this. Because if you're using qualitative analysis software, there's a huge learning curve associated with just using it. So try this method first. I'm sure it will work just fine for you. Um, anyway, that's all I have to say at this point. Don't forget to uh, take a look at the sample videos and we'll... Be in touch. Bye.